Welcome back. So today we're going to read a story titled Emmanuel's Dream, the true story of Emmanuel Ofusu Yaboa. So let's go ahead and check it out. Emmanuel's Dream, the true story of Emmanuel Ofusu Yaboa. Written by Laurie Ann Thompson, illustrated by Sean Qualls. In Ghana, West Africa, a baby boy was born. Two bright eyes blinked in the light. Two healthy lungs let out a powerful cry. Two tiny fists opened and closed, but only one strong leg kicked. Most people thought he would be useless or worse, a curse. His father left, never to return, but his mother had faith. Her name was Comfort, and she named her first child Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. As Emmanuel grew, Mama Comfort told him he could have anything but he would have to get it for himself. He learned to crawl and hop, to fetch water and climb coconut trees. He even shined shoes to earn money. Most kids with disabilities couldn't go to school. Still, Emmanuel's mother carried him there until one day she said, you are too heavy. From then on, Emmanuel hopped to school and back, two miles each way on one leg by himself. At first, nobody would play with him, so Emmanuel saved his money and bought something none of his classmates had, a brand new soccer ball. Of course he would share it, if he could play too. Lunging and spinning on crutches his grandmother had found for him and kicking the ball with his good left foot, Emmanuel earned their respect. His new friends sometimes used their lunch money to rent bikes. Would Emmanuel be able to join them? His friend Goodwin pushed him fast so he could balance. Over and over again, Emmanuel fell, hard, but finally, he rode. When Emmanuel was 13, Mama Comfort got very sick. She could no longer sell vegetables at the market, and Emmanuel's sister and brother were too little to work. He would have to support them. Against his mother's wishes, Emmanuel snuck out and boarded a midnight train to the bustling city of Accra, 150 miles away, alone. He didn't know it then, but it would be two years before he saw his family again. Emmanuel arrived full of hope. There were so many people, but no one would hire him. Shopkeepers and restaurant owners told him to go out and beg, like other disabled people did. Emmanuel refused. Finally, a food stand owner offered him a job and a place to live. When Emmanuel wasn't serving drinks, he kept busy shining shoes. He earned money and sent it home. One morning when Emmanuel went to buy shoe shining supplies, the shoe keeper thought he was there to beg and scolded him. Insulted, Emmanuel slammed his money down on the counter. The shoe keeper apologized, but Emmanuel would never forget. When Mama Comfort grew sicker, Emmanuel went home to be with her. From her bed on Christmas Eve, she told her son, be respectful, take care of your family, don't ever beg, and don't give up. By the next morning, Emmanuel's beloved mother was dead. He was heartbroken, but he knew her last words had been a gift. He would honor them by showing everyone that being disabled does not mean being unable. It was a big dream, but Emmanuel had a plan. Emmanuel had a sharp mind, a bold heart, and one strong leg. All he needed was a bike. At first, no one would help. They thought his plan to bicycle around Ghana was impossible. Then, Emmanuel wrote to the Challenge Athletes Foundation all the way in San Diego, California. They sent him a bike plus a helmet, shorts, socks, and gloves. Emmanuel started training for the long ride. He persuaded the king of his region to give him a royal blessing. He went door to door asking for additional support. Finally, he hired a taxi to follow him with drinking water, a camera, and his best friends. Then Emmanuel tied his right leg to the bike's frame, jammed his left foot into the flip-flop attached to the pedal, and rode. Emmanuel pedaled through the bustling city of Accra. He pedaled through the rainforest, over rolling hills, and across wide muddy rivers. He pedaled past Odom Forest and plantain farms, and through the market city of Kumasi. He pedaled as trucks roared past on narrow highways, and wild animals stalked his thoughts. He pedaled through vast grasslands and into the ancient city of Tamale. He rode up, down, across, and around his country, wearing proudly the colors of its flag. 
on a shirt printed with words, the pozo, or the disabled person. Along the way, Emmanuel talked to those with physical challenges and those without, to poor farm workers and wealthy landowners, to religious leaders, government officials, and reporters. He wanted everyone to see him and his disability. He wanted everyone to hear him and his message. The further Emmanuel rode, the more attention he got. Children cheered, able-bodied adults even rode along with him. People with disabilities left their home and came outside, some for the very first time. A young man once thought of as cursed was becoming a national hero. He completed his astounding journey, pedaling south to the sea and back up to Accra nearly 400 miles in just 10 days. But Emmanuel's success goes even further than that. He proved that one leg is enough to do great things, and one person is enough to change the world. Here's a quote from Emmanuel. In this world, we are not perfect. We can only do our best. Authors note, Emmanuel still isn't giving up. Since completing his first long-distance bike ride across Ghana in 2001, at the age of 24, he has competed in major athletic events, won international awards from Nike and ESPN, and carried the Olympic torch in Cairo. He starred in a documentary about his life called Emmanuel's Gift and appeared on The Oprah Winfrey Show. In 2006, thanks in large part to Emmanuel's bike ride and his continued political activism, the Ghanaian Parliament passed the Persons with Disability Act, which states that people with physical disabilities are entitled to all the same rights as the rest of the country's citizens. I am very happy for my disabled brothers and sisters in Ghana, said Emmanuel, but this is just the beginning. Today, Emmanuel continues to work on behalf of the disabled. He maintains a scholarship fund to help children with disabilities attend school, and he helps organizations distribute wheelchairs to those in need. In addition, he works closely with Ghana's government to pass laws protecting the rights of disabled citizens. And he speaks to political leaders, independent organizations, and school children around the world to deliver the message that disability does not mean inability. To find out more about Emmanuel and his activities, including the progress of the school he is building for children with and without disabilities, please visit Emmanuel's Educational Foundation and Sports Academy website at emmanuelsdream.org. And that is the end. This book was a very special gift from a friend, and I'm very thankful that they gifted me with this book. And one of my favorite things about this book is the quote at the end. And let me go ahead and read that to you again. It says, in this world, we are not perfect. We can only do our best. And that is an amazing message to pass on to anyone you know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this story and we'll talk to you later. Bye.